Happy Thanksgiving, everyone! Today we're going to play a game to help us remember all of the great things we have to be thankful for this season. I'm going to show you two different items and then you get to choose which one you're most thankful for. You might be thankful for both, but you have to choose the one you're most thankful for by doing whatever action is shown on the screen. Got it? Good. Here are your first two choices. If you love dogs, then I want you to jump up and down as fast as you can. But if you love cats even more, then I want you to clap your hands as fast as you can. Nice job. That was fun. All right, catch your breath. Let's try two more. If you love pizza, then I want you to stretch your arms as high up as you can. But if you love tacos even more, then I want you to reach down and touch your toes. Great job. Let's see what these next two will be. If you love books, then I want you to stand on one foot. But if you'd rather watch a movie, then I want you to spin in circles. All right. I bet all of you movie lovers are feeling a little dizzy. These next two will be a little easier. If you love fruit, then I want you to march in place. But if you love vegetables even more, then I want you to freeze and stand perfectly still. Great job. All right, we've just got a few left. Let's see what these next two are. If you love playing sports, any kind of sport, then I want you to do jumping jacks as fast as you can. But if you love playing video games even more, then I want you to do your best victory dance. Nice job. Let's see what our last two will be. If you love ice cream, then I want you to wave your hands in the air. But if you love candy even more, then I want you to flap your arms like chicken wings. Great job, everyone. That was so much fun. God has really given all of us so much to be thankful for. Let's not forget to tell him, thank you, this Thanksgiving. Hey, hey everybody, I am so glad you're here with us at Ringle Kids. We've got a lot of fun planned out as we learn what it means to have contentment. If you remember last week, we learned that contentment is being okay with what you have. You see, it's easy to look around and wish you could have some things that other people have. And it isn't necessarily a bad thing, but often, if you think that way, you're gonna find yourself wanting more and more and more. Oh, hey, got the text. I wonder what that is. Oh, man. Billy got a new bike. Oh, man, and it's the XXT1000. Man, it is so cool. You need to check this out. Man, I want one of those bikes. Compared to this scooter, it's not that great, is it? You see, that's why it's good to remember that God can help us be content and be grateful for what we do have. He can help us see all the good things that he's doing in our lives, and he can help us be thankful for the things that will always be true. That's why it's good to remember that God can help us be content and grateful for what we do have. Even if it is an old scooter, it rolls well and it handles good, but it's still not new and shiny. See, he can help us see all the good things that he's doing in our lives. So hang out with us today as we learn about a guy who was not content at all, and it cost him a lot. Light of mind, 
we do this. Exercise is important, you know, or of course. I mean, I'd rather be riding my bike outside right now, but the weather isn't cooperating. But that's okay, because I can ride this bike inside. Ooh, see that? I'm showing contentment. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. So I'm okay with this stationary bike. You know, they've made all kinds of advancements with stationary bikes. <gasps> I want one of those bikes that has all those different settings where you can make it feel like you're going like uphill or downhill. Whee! <laughs> no, you know what I really want? I want one that has a TV screen in the front so it looks like you're riding a bike through mountains or, 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 or next to the ocean. Maybe I can use my laptop. <sighs> Paris, France. <gasps> C'est magnifique. Mm. Ooh, I want a bike that comes with a built-in trainer. Someone to like pump me up while I ride. Come on, Erica. You can do it. That bike won't pedal itself. Yeah. Move. I can do it. Move. Yeah, let me more. Too bad all I got is this old thing. All it does is pedal. In today's story, we'll hear about a king who always wanted more and more and more. I kind of feel like him right now. It's not fun. <sighs> what are you slowing down for? You've got to keep moving if you're going to make it yes. all the way to Paris. You want to see the Eiffel Tower, oh. don't you? We. Oui. I can hear okay. you. Move, move. I will. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. 
the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 21. After David and Solomon, many kings ruled the lands of Judah and Israel. Some of them listened to God, but most did not. King Ahab was worse than any other king of Israel before him. He only thought of himself and did exactly as he wanted to do. Do exactly as I want. Yes, your highness. Uh, what do you want? Hmm. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and one... Oh, it escapes me. Ah, just bring me some pears flambe. No one ever said no to King Ahab. Not even his wife, Queen Jezebel. Am I the most fabulous king to ever rule this land? Yes, of course, because you have me. <laughs> king Ahab was certain he had everything he could ever want. That is, until he took a drive into the neighboring town of Jezreel. Ooh, just look at that lovely vineyard. It is perfection. Stop at once. King Ahab examined the green leafy vines and the heavy bunches of grapes. What fantastic fruit. The soil must be excellent. You, over there. Who, me? Who, me, your majesty? Uh, who, me, your majesty? Of course, you. Do you own this fine vineyard? I do, your majesty. Excellent. You must sell it to me at once and I shall turn it into a vegetable garden. No. Excuse me? Your majesty? I'll pay good money. I'll trade you a better vineyard. I said no, your majesty. May the Lord keep me from giving you the land my family handed down to me. You... what? No! <laughs> King Ahab was enraged. When he returned to the palace, he threw himself down on his bed and refused to eat anything, even date cakes dipped in honey. Why are you in such a bad mood? Why won't you eat anything? Neighbors won't give me his fine yard. Oh, snap out of it. You're the king. I'll get you that vineyard. Queen Jezebel was just as bad as her husband. Or maybe worse. She wrote a letter to the leaders of Naboth's town. Here is your mission, which you must accept. Number one, announce a special day and give Naboth an important seat. Two, have two bad guys sit across from Naboth and claim that he cursed God and the king. Three, drag Naboth out of the city and throw stones at him until he dies. That should clear. Queen Jezebel sent her message and the leaders of Naboth's town followed it to the letter. Tell the queen, mission accomplished. Queen Jezebel was delighted by this terrible news and immediately went to find King Ahab. Oh, woe is me. Naboth won't give me. Get up! Take over Naboth's vineyard. He's dead. What? <laughs> mine! All mine! King Ahab ordered his chariot and set off at once for Jezreel. <laughs> we'll rip out these annoying vines, plant peas, parsnips, potatoes. But even as Ahab garden partied, God spoke to the prophet Elijah. Go down to see Ahab. You will find him in Naboth's vineyard. Ahab has gone there to take it over. God gave Elijah a special message for the king. Elijah had faced Ahab before, and knew the king would not be pleased to see him. Okay, here goes. Elijah traveled to Jezreel and found Ahab in the vineyard. Pull out that row of vines. Dig up the soil. King Ahab. The king turned. His eyes narrowed as he spied Elijah. <gasps> My enemy, you found me. The Lord says, haven't you murdered a man? 
Haven't you taken his property? No, not me personally. And now he doesn't need it anymore. (laughs) So you've done what is evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord says, I am going to bring horrible trouble on you. You have caused Israel to sin. Oh. For once, Ahab listened to a message from God. He tore his clothes, a sign of great sorrow for what he had done. He put on the clothing people wore to show sadness. No food. Not even date cakes dipped in honey. Not even date cakes dipped in honey. King Ahab and Jezebel had made themselves miserable, taking more and more. And in the end, both of them paid for it. Yeesh! King Ahab really wanted Naboth's vineyard. It's okay to want things, but Ahab wanted it so badly that it made him miserable. He even refused to eat. Has it ever happened to you? Have you ever wanted something so badly that it was all you could think about? Maybe it made you like super sad when you couldn't get it. Or maybe you threw a tantrum. If that sounds like something you might do, you may need a little help with contentment. Wanting things is fine. It gives you something to work toward or to look forward to. But when you want more and and more and more and more, it can make you feel like Ahab, miserable. Jesus once said, watch out. Be on guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Jesus knew there is so much more to life than the stuff we have. There are memories to be made, adventures to be experienced. There are relationships to be grown with God and with others. These are things that will last long after the stuff we wanted has broken or (laughs) gone out of style. So it's okay to want things, but here's the one thing to remember. Wanting more and more can make you miserable. So maybe one day I'll get a stationary bike with a few bells and whistles, but in the meantime, I'll ride this one and imagine it's springtime in Paris. My imagination is very vivid. Au revoir! King Ahab and Queen Jezebel made some awful choices, all because they were focused on getting more and more things. They weren't content with being in charge and living in the palace. They could only think about what other things they wanted. And they ended up causing some really big problems because of it. Here's the truth, and it's our bottom line. Wanting more and more can make you miserable. Contentment doesn't mean that we never want things to be different than they are. But we can run into problems when we want too much of something. We often find that however much we have, it's never enough. And that was definitely true for King Ahab. He really wanted Naboth's vineyard, but he and Queen Jezebel did some terrible things to get it, and that made them miserable in the end. They had to face the consequences for the terrible things that they had done. The truth is, all of us can struggle with wanting more and more things, but we have to remember that we will only find contentment in our relationship with God. Our memory verse for this month is something that Jesus said to a whole crowd of people, and we can find it in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, okay? Read it with me. Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Wow, that is so true. Our relationship with God is so much more important than the stuff we have in this world. And next week, we're going to continue to better understand how we can be content. I'll see you next time, all right? Hey, don't forget, too much of a good thing is not always a good thing. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Hi there, I'm MC Haggis, world's greatest Scottish rapper. And this is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. Hey. Yo. This month, we're learning about contentment. Learning to be okay with what you have. Now, uh, that can be applied to so many things in your life. The house you live in, the toys you have, the car you drive, the friends you have. Now, the thing we need to remember is to not be focused on things other people might have.
and be happy with what we have, right, Seamus? Dang. Well, like these cookies me and Seamus have, huh? Huh? Eh? Huh? It's obvious that Seamus' cookie is bigger than my cookie, but, 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 but I'm totally okay with it. I mean, although that bigger cookie looks, looks better than mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, if you want to eat it, you can eat it right now. I'll just eat this tiny little cookie. What? Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Thank you, Seamus. I wasn't saying that to get you to switch cookies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was awfully nice of you to give it to me. <laughs> but you sure were quick to switch cookies. Why was that, Seamus? Is it, is it because that one is tastier than this one? You know what? That's all right. Uh, we're learning to be okay with what we have, so. Uh, I'm content with this cookie now. That smaller cookie though was big just enough, but that it still looked chewy. And I love the smaller cookies when they're chewy. What, oh, Seamus, why did you? <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> you gave me back my original cookie because you knew I wanted to be a good example and show contentment, right? Yeah. You're a wise man, Seamus. Thank you for helping me with this. What's rap about it? Kick it! Sometimes we want what others have and that can cause resentment. But learning to be okay with what you have is secure and that's contentment. Word! All right, and now let's enjoy these contentment cookies. Cheers! Oh, that cookie has rainbow sprinkles on it. Rainbow sprinkles are my favorite. Whoa, whoa, slow down there, whoa! Hey, what are you, storing for the winter? What are you doing? Oh, did you think I was gonna try and take that cookie from you? <laughs> no, I was not. I'm content with this sweet little chewy morsel. That's so delicious. Do you need some water? Can you breathe? I, I don't like seafood. Don't, don't do that. What are you, in fourth grade? Actually, I am. Hmm.